Hey everyone, so in the previous video we were covering the initial setup and all the fields for the visual. In this one, we're going to be going through the interactions, so you know how to use the visual. Now, as always, within the sample report, you already have all the data and visuals provided for you, so you can just simply play around with them. In this case, I'm actually also going to stay on the main page and just go through these interactions. So, first things first. The way you move the map is quite simple. You left click on the map itself and you move it in any direction. This allows you to quickly move between different areas of the map itself that you're using in your base layer. Now, the other thing that you can do here is a left click, just a simple left click. And this one has multiple applications. So for example, if I click on a node cluster, you can see that this is being used as a filter. If I click on one particular slice of the donut visual, that is gonna be used as an additional filter. If I click anywhere else where there are no active elements, I can clear the selection. But then again, if I click on one of the shapes that I have predefined, that is also gonna be used as filters. So essentially anything you do with a left click, unless it's on a white space, allows you to apply filtering on those particular areas. Now, the other thing that you can do here is a right click. Right click allows you to call out a tooltip. When you're using single nodes, this is gonna be just a single tooltip. But when you are using clusters, you're actually calling out a multi-page tooltip. And you can see it by these small arrows on both sides of the numbers right here. So if I click on them, you can see I'm going through all the points that the cluster actually covers. If I wanna close it, simply click on the close button right here and that's it. Now, ways on how you can zoom in into the map. The most simple one is just by using your scroll wheel on the mouse. So you scroll it up or down, depending on what you wanna do with the visual. Next thing is you can simply click on the zoom buttons that you have in the upper left corner. Something else that you can do here is a double click. That is also gonna initiate a zoom in. And the final thing on how you can actually zoom in into a specific region is if you hold down shift, you can mark an area that you wanna zoom into. So these are the options for zooming in and zooming out. Now afterwards, what also you can do here is in cases where you wanna create a multiple selection. For those cases, all you need to do is just hold down the control key and you can click, for example, on multiple states, like in my example here, and you're gonna be applying filters for both of them. Now, once we covered these interactions, there's something that the visual provides that has some additional interactions. And what I mean by that is that the visual has a toolbar item right here in the bottom left corner, which is called the lasso tool. And once you enable it, you have few additional sets of interactions that you can use to get the most out of it. So once you activate the lasso tool, you can actually draw your own shapes. So by clicking left mouse button, I can mark a certain area. And when I wanna finish drawing the shape, I can right click, and that is gonna essentially create the boundaries and finish the shape. Now, if you wanna create an additional point on the line, hover over the actual line itself, find when the marker changes its appearance, and then you can move or add an additional point. If you just wanna move the shape itself, left click on it and move it wherever you need it to be. Now, if you right click on a shape, this is gonna call out a custom pop-up, which allows you to further customize the shape itself. Now, here you can also delete it, and if you do any changes, don't forget that you need to click on save and close instead of just close. Otherwise, the changes are not gonna be saved. So once you've done that, for example, save and close, Another way on how you can delete a shape is if you click on it, so it becomes active, and then just simply clicking on the delete key, and that's it. So once you're done with drawing your shapes, for example, I'm gonna draw one just for the sake of it. There we go. I'm gonna disable it. Clicking on those custom shapes is also gonna initiate a filtering capabilities. All right, that's gonna be it for the interactions, and I'll see you in the next video.